Welcome to another painting tutorial. This one will feature the Grey Knight Dread Knight from Games Workshop. I'd like to start off showing you some of the partially assembled parts that we'll be painting in this tutorial. This is the chest back assembly. This is one of the assembled legs with one of the armor plates already attached. This is the heavy incinerator, which has been primed in white as opposed to silver for all the other parts because it will not be majority silver when it's finished, which is the same case for the Gatling silencer. This is one of the greaves, one of the arms, the upper torso of the pilot, one of the tanks for the heavy incinerator, which there are two, the harness for the pilot, the hip assembly, the exoskeleton arms, the Nemesis Greatsword, one of my personal favorites, one of the assembled feet, a pauldron, a bracer, and a empty fist. We also have the shoulder pad armor and the uh, knee pad on the left and a heraldry shield which fits onto the slot on the shoulder. So we're going to start out with one of the feet and we'll just do one of the feet to completion and then we'll do all the rest of the pieces of the model uh, piecemeal as we go. Um, right now I'm just checking the flow of paint coming out of my brush making sure we're not getting any spatter uh, and then we're going to hit all the undersides with this mixture which is two to one mix of chainmail metal to chaos black. We're just trying to get some shadows on the undersides of the details. And uh, we're also going to be hitting the back edges of some of these panels, so the undersides of these toes. And we're trying to create some, some nice light to dark gradients as it recesses back into those dark areas. You'll want to check periodically too on your airbrush. If you haven't used one before, the uh, acrylic paint does tend to dry slightly on the uh, needle and it can cause some spatter. Just trying to get an even gradient on that front panel. So this time we've mixed up one to one ratio of chaos black and chainmail metal. And we're going to be going back over the areas that we did before, uh, but a slightly smaller area so that we can create a further gradient as it travels back into the shadows. We're going to start out with this top plate here. And uh, we're also going to be adding a little bit to the ends of the toes. And because paints tend to dry a little lighter than they look when they're so wet, we're going to have to go over these areas again with that same one-to-one -one mix of chaos black to chainmail metal. We're going to be doing some highlighting in the next step, and we want the dark areas to be very dark so that the contrast between the lights and darks is very pronounced.
Next we're going to be highlighting with a one-to-one -one mix of Mithril Silver and Azerman Blue Wash. We're adding blue to the mixture now so that our armor has a slight blue tinge to it and will be more interesting than just grayscale armor. We're aiming to highlight the edges that are upward facing on all of our panels. and that should complete the foot. Now that we've done a quick run through of the process that we're going to be using on most of the panels on the Dread Knight, one thing that I think that we're going to do as an alteration is go ahead and coat all of these pieces that we've primed in silver with a slightly blue tinted metallic mix so that we don't have to worry so much about working in the blue tint at the very last step during the highlights. This will allow us to focus more on the gradation of blacks and whites and less concerned about the uh, the tinting during the process. So what we're using here is a one-to-one -one mix of chainmail metal and Azerman blue wash. And while we finish recoding all these pieces, I'd like to go ahead and preemptively answer a couple of questions about my setup. Uh, the airbrush that I'm using is the Badger Anthem 155 and I'm running my air compressor at 40 PSI. I'm also thinning my paints with regular household glass cleaner. Here we're going to be coating the entire gun in a, uh, a thin coat of Macrite Red. This will just be our priming layer for, uh, for both of the guns here. We're not as concerned with getting the entire end of the barrel because all that's going to be bronze and silver tones uh, as well as the hose on the back side. We're going to be doing the same thing here for the Gatling silencer. This has been part one of a tutorial on painting the Grey Knight Dread Knight. Thank you for watching, please tune in for the next installment, and as always, happy wargaming.